Okay, this is the Mark Scheme for Checkpoint 2. This is about phase difference and superposition, and there's actually a little bit about uh, Young's double slip on the end, so if you haven't done that yet, don't get uh, too put off by that. So our first question here, we've got um, a progressive wave, so uh, there's a nice big arrow here up, just in case you've got the wrong idea. Okay, we need to be really clear and careful about these diagrams. This is a progressive wave, not a stationary wave, so the wave itself is moving. Um, one of the key things to understand here is a little bit later the picture would have the wave moving to the right. Um, this is not what's happening to one position, one point on the wave over time. This is every point on the wave at one point in time. And this is a progressive wave, so it's moving. Okay, You need to have those thought processes every time you do one of these questions. Otherwise, it'll all go horribly wrong. Calculate the wavelength of the wave. Well, you need to look carefully um, this is one way from y, so here we've got the extra bit. Obviously you could do that at the other end if you like. Um, how much is this? Well, this is a quarter of a wave. So what we've got here is that 5 over 4, 1 and a quarter times the wavelength is 0 0.5 naught meters, okay, which means that the wavelength is 4 fifths of 0 0.5 naught meters, which is 0 0.4 naught meters. Okay, calculate uh, the frequency of the wave is 22, so calculate the speed. So this is a nice straightforward question. As long as you've got the first bit right there, this is C equals F lambda. So 22 hertz, 0.4 meters, no catches there. We get 8.8 .8 meters per second. State the phase difference between X and Y. Okay, well, this is one and a quarter waves, but X is in phase with this point here. So this is the difference here, this quarter of a wave. Okay, so it's either 90 degrees, okay, we need the unit here, so 90 degrees, or if you like, pi by 2 radians. Okay, either of those is fine. Okay, describe how the displacement of point Y uh, varies in the next half period. Okay, so this is where some people will get this wrong because they think Y is moving down and doing this so it's going to go down but that's completely the wrong way to think about it what's happening is half a period later this point on the, um, the wave will have moved to here so the wave's going to look something like this all right and what's gone past why is this part of way the wave here so this crest has come past so y is in fact on its way up it's going to go up to there and then after half a period back down to there um, sorry, so the answers here are it will move uh, moves up to the maximum displacement and then back to zero displacement, okay, because we're only doing half a wave. Okay, but the crucial thing here is it's going up, it's not going down. Okay, if you understand the wave diagrams, you'll understand why that is. Okay, this question won't work quite on the computer because it's a scale diagram, so um, you'll have to trust me a little bit on the drawing, but if you've got an A4 printout of this question, um, you'll be okay. So first of all, the definition of coherent. Um, so two points here, they want you to write the same frequency and a constant phase relationship. Okay. And then on the questions, um, this distance is 15 centimetres on the original diagram, and this one is 16 centimetres. Okay, this is a scale diagram. So we've got um, a 1 millimetre to 5 millimetre scale. Um and then we need the number of wavelengths. So what you need to say is that the diagram, the distance on the diagram is 15 centimeters from um, S1 to R, uh, which is 150 millimeters, but the scale is one to five, so it's 750 millimeters. It told us on the previous slide um, that the wavelength was 25 millimeters, so the number of wavelengths, whoops, is 750 divided by 25, which is 30. From S2 it's 16 centimetres, so 160 times 5 is 800 millimetres. Um, 800 divided by 25 gives us 32 wavelengths. 
Okay, the relevance of this is the fact that it doesn't matter how far it is between these two points and this point over here. What matters is the difference. So if I could make that into a whoops, if I could make that into an isosceles triangle, forgive me for not drawing that very well, this distance here, this distance here, come on, would be two wavelengths. Okay. Once it goes past this point, then the two distances are the same. And therefore, if they're in phase when they go past here, then they're in phase when they get over here. Okay, so the answer to the next one is um, that the two waves at any point will superpose. They do love you to say this word. They'll superpose. That just means that they both arrive at the same point um, and they add together. Um, and then it will be a maximum because they arrive in phase or you can write two lambda path difference or you can write because they interfere constructively okay describe how you would expect the signal strength to vary as the detectors move from R um, to P well P is the middle so here the path difference is zero here the path difference was 2 lambda, so this point here, the path difference is lambda. So it goes down to a minimum, but then at Q it's a maximum again, and then it goes down to a minimum. Um, sorry, so uh, we need to write an answer that goes something along the lines of uh, decreases. and then increases again to maximum at Q this repeats to maximum at P something like that okay so down to a minimum so if you were to plot the intensity we'd have a maximum here, down to a minimum, up to a maximum, down to a minimum, up to a maximum. Okay, not just maximum there, maximum there. Okay, because this is two lambda, so halfway between the path difference will be one lambda. Calculate the frequency of the microwaves. This is just a funny little gift question at the end. Um, so F equals C over lambda. These are microwaves, so they travel at the speed of light, so 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by their 25 millimetres, so 25 times 10 to the minus 3 gives us an answer of 1.2 times 10 to the 10 hertz. So even if you got confused by the previous question, that one's actually very straightforward. Okay, a uh, similar sort of question. Um, again, we've got 2,000 hertz sounds coming from these two sources, okay, with C in the middle, E and D either side, five meters away are the speakers. So explain why the sound intensity is a maximum at C. Okay, again, superposition occurs. Path difference is zero at C, so the right the waves must arrive in phase, and therefore you get constructive interference. Okay, it has told us somewhere that um, they're in phase over here, because obviously if they're not in phase over here, they won't arrive in phase over here. Why is it a minimum D or E? Well, these must be points where the path difference is half the wavelength. Therefore, the, the waves arrive at antiphase or 180 degrees or pi out of phase. And therefore, you get destructive interference. Okay, and the last question. Again, first part is nice and easy. So to calculate the wavelength of the sound. So lambda equals C over F. This is uh, 330 because we're on sound now. Divided by 2000 gives us 0 0.165. That's the easy part of this question. The second bit is a tricky one. Um, so this is a young double slit sort of question. Okay, we've got two sources and we've got fringes over here. So W equals lambda D over S is the equation we need. So this is 0.165 uh, times 5 divided by 0 0.75. That gives us 1.1 meters. However, 
just to really catch you out these two are the minima okay so this is like the fringe separation the fringes if you like are doing this sort of thing okay so we've got that distance but we've been asked for this distance so we've got to do 1.1 divided by 2 0.55 meters